So in today's video we're going to talk about three strange things that came out of a single publication no less. We're going to talk about a concept of shedding which is the idea that you could be shedding vaccine from outside your body or actually vaccine product more specifically. We're going to talk about also unusual clotting that has been observed supposedly and finally we're going to talk about also very unusual post-vaccination menstruation symptom called deciduous cast which is how this video had its origin so let's get started my name is Dr. Mikhail Rashik of Merrow Genomics and in one of our COVID Q&A events one of the ladies brought up this uh, concept of deciduous cast, cast shedding and I had no clue what that meant, what it was and I promised that I would do some analysis, scientific analysis on this and the question was has there been an observation in, of increased deciduous cast shedding post vaccination. Now what is this? This is superbly rare event actually where Basically, in the simplest term, imagine that your endometrium wall lining can come off in its entirety and you can get basically a shedding of this, what would look like, like a giant clot that would resemble the shape of the uterus. Now, I tried to find information related to this and there was only one paper that discussed this concept in relation to COVID-19 and this is the paper we're going to be discussing the really strange paper because of all of the different strange things that it comments so first of all about the paper it looks like a proper scientific paper no doubt um, it looks though to me like this is a very brand new scientific journal it looks like maybe it was created within the last couple of years. And I think it was created to be able to freely voice opposition against vaccinations. And the reason why is because when I reviewed some of the literature, they're, they're very heavy on documenting problems related to vaccines. So, um, don't know how legitimate this is, I didn't research this, but as far as I'm concerned, it looks like an actual publication, scientific publication, that is referenceable. So, here we are talking about it. So, what these authors did is they ran a survey and they reported that, based on the survey of approximately 300 women, about 5% of them reported mentioning that they had this event of deciduous cast shedding which is extremely abnormal or, or unusual because this event is supposed to be so rare that according to those authors that the actual incidence of it is not even known true incidence in the population that's how rare it is and they mentioned that in the last hundred years or so in all of the scientific literature there's only been a handful of examples described ever and hence there's different theories as to what might be causing it but no one really knows much about it that's how rare it is so to have this many women comment on something similar post COVID-19 injections it's unprecedented according to these authors. Now, of course, this survey is likely biased and the reason why is because they also, which is of course biased meaning it's self-selected individuals. So predominantly women who obviously have experienced problems participated in a survey. And the reason why is because the authors also mentioned that more than 96% of all of the participants in that survey did mention that they have experienced problems post vaccine menstruation, problems post vaccination and as we'll discuss in a moment that's much higher 
than what is typically observed in literature. And we've already made a couple videos on with regards to this as well. And we're going to talk about a bit more. So nice. So um Nevertheless, I wanted to bring it up is because in the very first video I, I've made on this topic, I got trashed afterwards with commentary because the paper I was discussing in that video made a comment that the, the actual menstru menstruation and the cycle was not significantly affected. And many, many women or their partners responded or friends responded with examples of how severely these cycles have been affected and many commented on having unusual large clots. So here we are, perhaps we're talking about this deciduous cast. If so, if you've experienced that, well, here's potential explanation and we're gonna get to the bottom of that as well as to why these authors explain why this particular thing might have been happening which is also weird, so stay with me. So, because of the nature of the publications, the authors obviously believe this is spike protein related, and they mention that, and this is the second very unusual thing, they mention that it's documented that spike protein can affect Menstrual, menstrual cycle, post-infection, post-vaccination, or, or third option, and this is the really strange one, the really, really unusual claim, or through what effectively is exosome shedding. So what we're talking about by shedding is that people could then presumably breathe out exosomes and be spreading that with the spike protein on it and spreading that to others. So this concept is of shedding the vaccine has been discussed many times by many of the followers of the YouTube channel. But realistically, this is more, more like a myth in science because there is no supporting evidence of that at all that shedding occurs. I did investigate this myself and I never found any proof of this from actually happening. However, theoretically it could be possible because we do know that in animal kingdom, yes, you could infect one organism from one organism to another using exosomes, so that is known. So what are exosomes? These are tiny little particles, like blabs of cells that can carry molecular information, including spike protein. And in one of our past videos, we did talk about how spike proteins do embed in these exosomes and they can circulate in your body in these exosomes for many months. Now, that's not known for certain because this has not been repeated and science I always keep in mind that a lot of science can be very speculative until it's been observed many times. So <laughs> whenever someone tells you, hey, you gotta believe science, <laughs> you should always ask, well, how much supporting evidence is there <laughs> to believe it? Because with science, it is okay to report back to the woods with me, to report unusual informations that are not necessarily true, they're being reported in order to determine whether that observation is true or not, or just a coincidence. Because uh, coincidences are observed very often in science, and then we have to take our time to discover whether, whether that would have been real or not. So, obviously these authors provided references for their claim that shedding through exosomes, shedding spike protein from vaccinated individuals to others through exosomes takes place. And I was very eager to look at those references, but unfortunately 
there was nothing in that I could discover in those references, two references they provided with relation to this shedding. So unfortunate because this is basically, as far as I'm concerned, an unsubstantiated claim. Not a good way to do this, but this happens in scientific literature quite often or another very common problem in scientific literature is that a reference is provided and it's not the actual reference, it's a paper that then provides the actual reference and you gotta go chase the actual reference. But in this case, I didn't find anything. Not a good thing because when you make such a monumental claim as, as this, you should have a reference or at least discuss this further. So, hmm, but it is the first time I've ever seen myself. That doesn't mean this hasn't happened before. First time I've seen myself where someone have made a reference to basically exosome shedding mm, from vaccinated individuals, but again, unsubstantiated at all. So take it for whatever that might mean. But I did study those two papers they provided. There were, there were further evidence, further information discussing how menstruation is affected post-vaccination. So one of the papers was, was really cool because it was uh, a study of women from Middle East and Northern Africa. So it's great to get a different geographical locations represented like that as well, because now we're clearly building evidence that menstrual cycles are being affected from all around the world. Now these authors mentioned that in their study with um, approximately 300 women as well, give or take, um, about one third of them experience their menstrual cycles being affected by COVID-19 infection, but about two thirds of the respondents mentioned their menstrual cycle being affected after vaccination and this was especially after the first one so about 50 percent of women were affected after first vaccination and so we are building a body of evidence that this is a very real phenomenon this is now will be third and fourth paper i'm discussing and what's what's um What's interesting is um, that these authors, they didn't mince words <laughs> about it. They mentioned that the, both the men, menstruation length as well as the length of the menstrual cycle were extended on, on average amongst that, the, that study population by approximately 0.5 days and one day respectively. And they mentioned that this is very significant change. It might not sound like much, but on a population, while it, this can happen normally from cycle to cycle, but on a, on a population level, this is very significant change. And they theorize as to why this might happen. And this is where it got really interesting. So we've already brought up different concepts because no one truly knows why this is taking place or why vaccines at the moment, COVID-19, vaccines or injections might be affecting these uh, these uh, menstrual cycles and many theories abound and we've been discussing them so they brought up one that i haven't read yet and they mentioned that this is they suspect that this is because of vaccine induced thrombocytopenia now what is thrombocytopenia that's basically when you have a loss of circulating platelets in your blood they're gone basically or massively reduced and that's what that refers to and the reason why they believe that that is the cause is because they mentioned that vaccine induced thrombocytopenia has been observed with many other vaccines in the past as well and it has been observed that when this takes place it does also affect menstrual cycles so this is not just because of covid19 injections this has been observed historically with many other types of vaccines as well and what they believe that what this then what this then causes this reduction of this this thrombocytopenia 
leads to imbalance, imbalanced immune response of the body, which is where now that that pituitary ovarian axis is, or the brain ovarian axis, hormonal axis is now perturbed. And um, ooh, <laughs> I have a steep trail in front of me. And, uh, and this is what's causing perturbation to, to the menstrual cycle. So that I thought it was really interesting. Hmm. And um, the second paper reported something similar, slightly less number of women, so about 50 to 60% of their respondents mentioned they had their menstrual cycles affected. I believe the second vaccine this time had a bigger effect than in, in the previous paper I just mentioned. You can see the, the pattern is very similar, very similar, so we're getting like a global picture but really what i wanted to focus oh and the good news though is that the recovery is fairly fast typically for for many of these women whose psych menstrual cycles are affected majority of them i believe this was in, mentioned in both publications will recover within within a month so that's obviously a good thing that the that for majority this obviously does not speak for everyone the recovery will be fast clearly some are affected for longer and that also was reported too so in the second paper really what was also interesting is their explanation as to why that might be happening and this is where the authors mentioned the possibility of spike protein being responsible for what's what's happening they're saying that they cannot discount that the spike protein is directly responsible although there is no direct evidence for this so and what they believe might be happening as a <laughs> cool as a consequence of this is um, that the spike protein might be causing inflammation and it's the inflammation that might then be perturbing the horm the hormonal balance and why you might be then experiencing menstrual cycle um, imbalance if you will now this is also the same and by the way this is why the authors because of this one potential mention of the spike protein this is why the authors of the decidual cast <laughs> decidual cast paper good recovery um, mentioned the, this reference that was so close to a wipeout <laughs> um, and uh, and they followed the same explanation but finally they decided to explain why so that they, this was their their echo that explanation for why the menstrual cycle might be affected but they also wanted to provide an explanation as to why these decidual casts might be forming in women who've been who've been injected with these COVID-19 vaccines and now they brought up the third most unusual mm, element if you will that i wanted to discuss with you that, that i haven't seen before at least not in a published literature and they actually brought up the concept that very unusual clots are being observed in vaccinated individuals in some of the vaccinated individuals and uh, these clots are just not what normally you would expect but this is indirect evidence because this is based on a discussion, personal interview with an embalmer. So someone who actually deals with cadavers and prepares these bodies. And this one particular individual that they interviewed mentioned that very unusual clots are being observed. They look like snake-like long clots that can be of enormous length. They can be many, many centimeters long. And the authors provided pictures. So both these decidual casts and the pictures, they're available in these publications. 
so if you want to take a look especially if you're if you're a medical doctor and you might be dealing with this take a look to see to see if this corroborates your experience or not uh, however if you're squeamish <laughs> i suggest don't look because they do look they look they do look well grotesque to some degree uh, and um and they provided a reference but the reference is that same pub uh, journal own article with the same leading author now this leading author is an obstetri obstetrician and gynecologist so presumably an expert so not someone who doesn't know what they'll be talking about but they were provided photographic evidence from this embalmer of these unusual clots and based on that those photographs so they did not actually study actual specimens based on photographs only these authors concluded not sure how but they concluded that these clots were predominantly made of fibrin now i just brought up fibrin in in a recent video when i made a video discussing natokinase which naturally can destroy fibrin but i brought and made the video because of the possibility that the same natokinase could be used to destroy spike protein i didn't think i'd be talking about fibrin so quickly so they believe that this is fibrin deposits that make these clots so long and unusual so there's this white whitish part that's what would be the fibrin part and once in a while you see in these weird long clots these bulbs reddish bulbs and they think that's basically um a, th a thrombus formed and the rest is fibrin but again it's indirect information because they didn't study the actual specimens this is strictly their conjectures based on looking at the photographs why fibrin is because fibrin deposition has been documented indeed in tissues post vaccination as well as COVID-19 so so uh, this is not not unusual like it has been observed it has been documented definitely in lung tissue or in plus placenta um, placenta or was it hmm, umbilical cord <laughs> can't remember from the top of my head actually but it has been documented but this is on a cellular level so this is on a microscopic uh, steep steep path again <laughs> i'm gonna do a shortcut and and uh, not embarrass myself although clearly i have some cut like reflexes i've been demonstrating on this trail <laughs> so as but that's like as i mentioned this is on a microscopic scale not a macroscopic scale nevertheless these giant clots have been documented for the first time as far as i'm concerned in some sort of referenceable scientific mat material and they the reason why i bring this up is because the authors believe that it is this fibrin that is causing these deciduous casts in women post vaccination so they're not the typical same deciduous cast observed in history they're a different type of deciduous cast because they believe that it is this fibrin that might actually be causing causing binding of that endometrium in order to in order to form this the actual deciduous cast and why women suddenly now observe these unusual unusual clots that they've that they might have been well, shedding subsequently during menstruation so this is basically the all the different topics i wanted to tell you a lot of unusual information from a single publication but I, uh, as i mentioned i don't know about the quality of that scientific journal it's very recent so it would be great to see all of this being repeated in more reputable sources so that we can understand what is truly going on here with uh, regards to what these authors are are talking about all right <laughs> if you're still with me just wanted to let you know we have some events coming up there will be another covid q a event it's a uh, basically question period and an open mic period as well where anyone who participates you can ask questions or, or provide a comment and then we also have another event 
for business owners which is a program wellness program we're introducing for business owners to provide to their employees where we where we teach about different concepts of wellness from different areas of of uh, of life which is basically financial wellness mental health wellness and i take care of the component of physical wellness through the use of genetics so check it out if that's of interest to you links to to these are in the description below and um, i always try to send some free tickets to the COVID q a event if you subscribe to uh, my newsletter then we send you a ticket uh, to the to the event. All right, take care everyone, bye.